Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about some of the most popular edits, how you can use them in your videos and where you can see examples from Hollywood. This is part of the series I'm doing on filmmaking and how to use common filmmaking techniques in your own videos. Now for a straightforward video blog just like this, there's not an awful lot of need to do very much other than what you're seeing right now, but if you're creating a film or if you're doing a, a more creative uh, video then there are a lot of times when you're going to want to use some edits and cuts and, and transitions to really and make your video pop. Actually, even as a video blogger, there are things that you can do to drive attention or to help sell a story. So in this video, I'm going to be covering a lot of the terms that you will have heard other creators talking about and give you some examples of where they are used and what they do for your video. The first cut to talk about is the standard or hard cut. This is where you just want to cut from one frame to the next without any transition or effect and you'll see this used all the time in everyone's videos. For example, in this very video, you just saw one. A cut is where you have a, for example, a pause or an um or just taking out some dead space. You put a hard cut in there just to speed up the timeline. Now there are ways you can disguise a hard cut by zooming in on the cut or you can just make a cut without changing any of the framing, whatever suits you. But a hard cut is a straight cut taking out a piece of the timeline or a piece of sound or whatever you want just to take that out of the video. But the only downside, even though it's probably going to be your most common cut, it doesn't really add an awful lot of visual meaning and sometimes you'll see some overly edited cuts where there's almost a cut in between every single word. Now that's fine if you talk like like if you talk like this and you're quite slow then doing the same thing like now with a lot of cuts in between your phrases can really help but generally speaking you're better off putting more time into your filmmaking into presentation skills than doing too much in editing because it can look really odd. Now, the next type of cut we're going to talk about is the jump cut. Very similar to the hard cut allows us to add a little more dynamic flavour to the story we're telling. The jump cut almost allows the editor to move forwards in time so you can for example if we look at the classic film Battleship Potemkin, we can see where the we see a video of the or we see a clip of the battleship firing. Then we immediately cut to the bombardment of the shells landing in the city. We can see the destruction of various angles. So we've used a jump cut here to transition from the shells being fired from the ship to immediately seeing the destruction they cause. Interviews are another good example of where you can use jump cuts, especially if you want to switch between different camera angles during the interview, help with the flow of the interview is a very effective variation on the hard cut. Next up we have the J and L cuts. Now like many many of these editing techniques you will have seen these countless times possibly without even realizing what you're looking at. J cuts and L cuts are very similar in how they look on the nonlinear timeline but I'll explain each one individually. So first of all we have the J cut. Now with the J cut the sound of the next scene is heard before the video cuts over, over to it. Visualize a J in your timeline to understand what that looks like. You'll often see it when I'll start talking about maybe a car and then we'll hear the sound of the car coming in over the audio and then we'll cut to the picture of the car after I've started talking about it and after we've heard the sound of the car coming in. And with an L cut it's kind of the opposite of a J cut. The picture changes before the sound does. Using the same video clip I might now start talking about a car. The video will have now jumped to the picture of the car but I'm still talking about the car and then the sound changes to the car's noise or engine. You may even have a transition effect on the sound where it gets faded in, for example. Those are two examples of where you might, uh, of what a, a J and an L cut look like. If you've ever heard the terms video advance or audio advance, these are basically the old terms that were used before nonlinear editing techniques were developed with the advent of computer editing. Now, when you normally use these, is a form of editing known as ping pong. You may want to cut, for example, in an interview where I could be talking and saying something. Thing, then you may want to cut to the next person perhaps nodding their head in agreement and then switch the audio across when they actually begin to speak. It's a good way of storytelling where you may want to keep your eye on one thing but listen to something else. Basically it allows you to see the reaction of the other person while listening to the voice of the first person. It makes interviews particularly interesting. The next cut is called cutting on action and this is something that's become extremely common in action films <laughs> naturally. You don't have to use this cut only in action sequences but it is an extremely effective storytelling technique when you have some dramatic or some action scenes that you really want to get across to the viewer. If you think of editing as motivation ask yourself why 
as you're moving from scene to scene. An excellent example of um, action cuts is The Matrix. Take a look at this scene here where the our heroes enter the bank and every, to every time you see a cut, it's because there is a cut to the action. Now notice how they don't always finish emptying a magazine or even finish taking the guns out sometimes. These cuts, however, cut on the action sequences. And I think most people would agree that you end up with a particularly breathtaking action sequence such as this. Almost every cut in that scene happens mid action. Now you might think, well, you know, that doesn't make sense, but watch it and you will see exactly exactly what I mean. The result is a very, very smooth transition through, throughout the entire scene and an extremely well paced sequence. Next up we have the cutaway. This is one of my favourite cuts in editing techniques and literally takes the viewer away from the main focus of the action, often to reinforce a point or sell a, an idea or to add extra context to what's being told on screen. One of my favourite cutaways is actually from Terminator 2 which is also a little bit of an easter egg. There's a famous sequence where we see Arnold Schwarzenegger buy a box of roses and he heads on to the next scene with the roses under his arm and then when the action breaks out he pulls a shotgun from the box of roses, drops the roses on the floor, there's then a cutaway to Arnold walking on the roses before we switch back to the main action scene where we see him unloading his shotgun into the baddie. The reason this worked so well is a there's that metaphor for the roses themselves and also that it was a huge in joke regarding Guns and Roses, who did the soundtrack for the Terminator 2 film. So that was a really good use of a cutaway to A, have a little joke, and B, to really underscore the action that was about to follow as to what those roses were all about. Another extremely well crafted action scene, which is literally out of the How to Do Cutaways handbook, is the famous bathroom scene in Pulp Fiction. Incredibly famous cutaway when you see the Pop Tarts coming out of the toaster during that action sequence. It's literally a handful of frames, and yet that tells the story of that action so well. First of all, we cut away to the cabinet to show the Pop-Tarts, then to the gun, then to the bathroom door. This all gives us the context and tells us there's somebody there. Then we forget about the Pop-Tarts until suddenly, bang, out come the Pop-Tarts and blam, 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 the shots are fired. It's a classic scene and an excellent example of how cutaways are used in cinema. Next up, we have the cross cut. This is also known as parallel editing. This is where you cut between two scenes that are happening at the same time, but in different places or spaces. When done effectively, you can tell multiple stories at once, although don't go too crazy or it gets confusing for the viewer. This is used extremely effectively by Christopher Nolan, and again, straight out of the How to Edit playbook. Let's take a look at this scene from Inception. Take a look at the van scene in particular to see how all these different stories are told at the same time, using cross-cutting to get the story across simultaneously. I'll be honest, a lot of people found Inception a little bit difficult to follow because of the cross-cutting especially if they weren't paying attention and didn't really see what's going on. But once you know what's happening, this is an extremely effective technique for storytelling. Cross-cutting does require quite a bit of skill. Doing it badly, and even if you do it well, it can actually confuse people. So you really need to plan out your shots carefully if you're going to be employing cross-cutting. For example, with things like hard edits, jump cuts, J and L edits, you'll probably do those on the fly as you're building your story. With cross-cutting, you probably have to plan that ahead in your storyboard because that they're difficult to get to do right, but very effective if you do do it right. Next up, we have another of my favorites, the montage. I love montages. Ever since I saw Rocky running up the steps to Eye of the Tiger when he was learning how to fight, I loved a montage. A montage is basically an editing technique that tells a long story in a very short space of time. Athletes preparing for a big event, well, that's like the common use of a montage, or as used in um, Team America, the um, that's such a, they even have a we need a montage song that plays during the montage sequence. Absolute genius. So montage is a really good way to show that you had a starting point and an end point and a load of stuff happened in the interim that basically meant they needed to do this and they got to there and they did it quickly. I think Rocky and Team America are excellent examples of when you might want to do this. And finally, we have another staple of storytelling, the match cut. Now you will have seen several match cuts, I have no doubt, and they aren't used that often, but they are extremely good at storytelling. And it's a technique used to match the movement of space between two separate objects 
but to ultimately tell one story. One of the most famous, and again straight out of the How to Edit playbook, is Stanley Kubrick's 2001. In particular, that very, very famous opening scene where you see the dawn of man with the cavemen, and they throw a bone up into the air, and as it spins up the frame, it then becomes the spaceship circling in space. Using that one cut, he tells the entire story of time has passed, and now we're in space. It really, you will have seen that scene. If you've watched that film, that scene will probably have stuck with you because it's such a, an influential piece of filmmaking and such a clever piece of storytelling that you probably didn't know that there was a name for that type of cut. Well, now you do. You've seen YouTubers often use, make entire videos of these, of these match cuts to quite clever effects where balls will be thrown and then they'll cut away to somebody catching the ball but it's in a different place. So that is it for my list of well-known editing techniques and types of cuts and where you can use them in your videos and examples of where you can see them in big film productions. I hope you found this useful and if you want to be kept informed of more of my content don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that little alarm bell that pops up to be kept informed. As always I'd love to know what you think and hear your feedback and if there's any particular cuts that you use in your videos drop your comments below. If you like the video hit that like button. If you didn't like it well hit the dislike button. Boo! Popping up over there is the last video I put out and below that is the video YouTube thinks you should watch next. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you in the very next show. Bye! Mwah.